Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be looking at lenses, we're gonna be looking at camera distance, we're gonna be looking at wide angle shots, we're gonna be looking at depth of field and more cool stuff like that. All right, let's check it out, here we go. Okay guys, well we're in Maya 2018 and I set up a, uh, a simple scene here that we can use in this tutorial and it's basically, um, you know, it consists of a couple of props I did in the past. So we have, uh, and I'll hit five on my keyboard so we can see it in shaded mode. We have a bookcase looking like a cow, we got a table, we got a wine bottle and we got a backdrop. That's basically it, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna be talking about here is how to set up this scene, let's say if you want to render it. And I'm gonna specifically be talking about uh, the size of uh, your render, um, film gates, cameras, lenses, uh, angles, focal length, all the kind of cool stuff, okay? Alrighty, so normally when you're looking at your scene, you will uh, be looking at it through the perspective camera. That's what we're doing right now, okay? So you can pan around, look at it and whatnot. The thing is, I want to have a specific dedicated camera that I can control and aim and so forth. So what I'm going to do right now is um, go to panels and perspective and you can see that I only have perspective to look through. So I'm going to go to create, I'm going to go to cameras and I'm going to create a new camera. Now, when I want to select this camera, I get a bunch of options. I can create a regular camera. I can create one with some additional options, in this case, aim, and you have aim and up, and then you have stereo camera and multi-stereo rig. Now, this one and this one, they're way too advanced for this tutorial, so we're not gonna do that. These three, um, we're gonna go with the top one, the basic one, but the second one allows you to aim specifically at a certain object as a camera. And the third one allows you to do that as well, but you can also tilt the camera. But like I said, we're just gonna use a default, like so. And it will be represented by this symbol on the floor right here. And that's convenient because we can now hit W and pull up our camera, hit E to rotate it, hold down J and point it towards the wall, and then hit W again and pull it back and whatnot. Now, the problem is though, I don't know what is visible uh, looking through this camera because I'm not looking through the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to panels and suddenly instead of just perspective camera we now also have camera one and by selecting that what I'll be doing is I'll be looking through that camera that we just created and there you go. So this is what I'm seeing. Now um, that's not what I want to see so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and as I do so I'm actually moving my camera and I'm going to find a nice angle, let's say maybe something like this. And let's say I'm happy with that. Now, what I need to know first is what is in my shot when I actually render this. Now, for that, it's important to understand what is the size of my render. So I'm gonna to go to my render settings here. And if I go in to uh, the common setting, you can see that my preset is set to HD 1080. That's the size and the resolution uh, 1920 by 1080. That's going to be the size of my render, right? Now, if you change that, it will have an effect on everything else. So make sure you check that. So now that I have that, I want to know what's going to be in my rendered shot. Now, for that, I'm going to turn on my film gate. Now the film gate is up here. You have this little thing that looks like a piece of film. And when I click on that, it will kind of create a border, uh, this uh, rectangle here that tells me what is in your shot. Now, uh, as I'm still looking through my camera, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit until everything is actually in my shot. And I'm gonna cut off this little piece of table right there, right? And what I wanna do is check whether it's actually true that that will not be in my rendered shot. And the way I do that is simply by clicking on this IPR button right here to do a quick IPR render. And there you have it. You can see that the table is here and you can see that that little piece of table is not in my frame. Perfect. Okay, so let's close that down. Now that we have all that, I want to fix this in place and make sure that it never changes again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view, bookmark, edit bookmark, and we'll call this uh, cam1 underscore bookmark, okay? Hit apply and hit close. So if I, for whatever reason, move around like this or whatnot, and I want to go back to where I was, I go to view, bookmark, and boom, there you go. 
All right, so now that we have all that, what we're going to do next is we're going to go and look at some uh, camera settings. So I'm going to hit Control A to open up the attribute editor. And as we do so, we have our camera one uh, tab here, which tells us about the translate values and the rotation values and whatnot. So the position of the camera, basically. But here uh, on this tab, we have all our camera settings. Now, looking at the top um, um, drop down menu here, we have uh, the option camera, camera and aim, camera aim and up. That's what I talked about just now. Uh, we're going to leave it at regular camera. And then here we have an angle of view and a focal length, right? Now, the thing is, angle of view and the focal length are um, basically uh, related to each other. So if we change the focal length of the camera, the angle of view will change automatically as well. Right now, the focal length is set to kind of a default of a 35 millimeter. And uh, let's see what happens if we decide to change that. First of all, if we change this, the top value here will change as well. So let's go in and change this to, let's say, an 80 millimeter lens. And immediately, everything that's in your shot changes as well. And the angle of view now changed to 25. So let's go back to 35. And as we do that, the angle of view becomes bigger. So basically, what we're saying here is, uh, if the number of the focal length goes down, the, your angle becomes bigger. That kind of makes sense. It's like um, using your, your uh, thumb and point finger or index finger, or whatever it's called, in front of your eye, you can see much more. But if you look through, let's say, a pipe, you will see a lot less. Okay, hope that makes sense. Anyway, so um, that's what you can do to control that. So I'm gonna leave this at default, 35 millimeter. I think that's fine. Uh, but what I want to do though is I want to look at the film gate whether I want to change this or not and here we have a bunch of uh, defaults or uh, templates we can choose from. So let's say I want to set this to a default of 35 millimeter Academy. Well, you'll see that this changes right here. Okay, now I can go back and I can say well I want 70 millimeter. I get a much wider angle and that will uh, force me to change my settings again. So you need to be aware of all that. I'm going to go back to user because that's what I created and let's go back to my bookmark and we're good. Now um, I'm okay with this. Let's do a quick IPR render and let's see what we have here. Okay, not bad. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to play with the depth of field settings. So I'm just going to make this nice and small so we can see real time what happens, right? So I'm just going to get in here and we'll just pull this in. And we'll pull it in from this angle as well. So we've got lots of room and we can see what's going on. Hopefully it's big enough for you guys. Okay. So we got all that, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here and we're going to look at depth of field. Now, right now, depth of field is turned off. Um, what depth of field is basically is what is in focus in your shot and what is not. Okay. So if you have uh, an aperture like the value that we were talking about before, um, with a very wide angle, light comes in fast. And as a result, what you will see, uh, because it's really shallow, you will have some items in focus and some will not be. Right now in this IPR, everything is uh, in focus. What we're going to do now is we're going to focus specifically on the wine bottle on the table. Okay. So first of all, what we need to do is turn on depth of field. Now, when I do that, you see that my IPR render immediately becomes blurry, all of it. For the simple reason that Maya does not know what to focus on because I didn't tell him. Right, so that brings me to the first value here where it says focal distance. So how far into the scene should Maya focus? Well, for that, I need to know what the distance is to let's say the table or the wine bottle or the book rack, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure how far it is to my wine bottle because that's what I wanna focus on. Now, I did a video years ago where I did, I used a measure tool in Maya to measure the distance between the camera and the object. But uh, Maya now has an option that's way, way easier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just move this out of the way and I'm going to select my bottle in my scene and I'm going to go up to display, heads up display, and I'm going to go to object details. And as I do that, I will get information here in the top where it says distance from camera is 11.793. 
That's exactly what I want to know, right? Perfect. So I'm going to go back in and select my camera because I need to have that in my attribute editor, right? And uh, let's see, we're going to go in here and we're going to type in 11.793. And as I hit enter, the bottle should be perfectly in focus and everything else should basically be blurry. Okay, so let's see if that's true. And there you go. And I'll make this a bit bigger so you can see it. Bottle is perfectly in focus. Even the front here of the table is a bit blurry. And of course, the background is very blurry. Now, if you think that is a bit too much, what you can play with is the f-stop. Now, the f-stop in uh, traditional cameras relates to how many times light is blocked or stopped uh, towards a certain effect, okay? So if you had an f-stop or an aperture value of, let's say, 2.8, uh, that means that light is stopped 2.8 times, okay? So that means that light's coming in pretty fast, and as a result, it will be very hard to get everything in focus. Now, I know for a fact that the values used in Maya right here, they do not uh, relate uh, well with real world values in cameras. But I do know that there's a relation between a low value and a high value. So for example, if this were an actual camera and I took a photograph of this bottle with an aperture of let's say maybe 2.8 or so, I would get an effect like this. If I bumped that up to let's say F16 or something, I would have a lot more in focus in this shot. So let's see if the same thing applies here. This is a fairly low value. You can see not a lot is in focus. Let's bump this way up and see if we get more stuff in focus. And that's exactly what happens. So as you bump up that f-stop, um, a lot more can be focused in the scene and that will help you to decide, you know, what kind of style you want. It's basically a creative decision. So I'm gonna bring that back again and then you get a nice, nice blurry uh, section in the, uh, in the back, okay? Now we'll do one more. Let's say we want to focus on the bookcase and not on the front there, right? So again, we'll repeat that process. We'll need to uh, select our bookcase and the distance is uh, 22.16, which is good to know. We'll select our camera again and we'll go in here and we'll set that to 22.16 and we'll render that out and there you go. Your background is now perfectly in focus and the front is perfectly blurred, right? Well, that's basically what I wanted to cover in this video, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, and if you've got any questions or want me to do a follow-up video on this, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to do that. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.